record that. All right, now we're off. Sorry for the rough start, but let's get cracking. So a um, little bit about me, just some background. My name is Scott. I'm wearing the exact same hat in this picture as I am today. So you all win the prize. <laughs> but I work in the product marketing department here at Bloomerang, um, but my background has always been in support uh, here. So I've I've really enjoyed getting to work with customers for the last uh, four years now here at Bloomerang. Um, so if you've ever used the chat feature or called in, you've might have, you might have uh, called me or talked to me in the past. So if you're a current customer of Bloomerang, welcome back. If you're just checking things out or a prospect, um, also welcome. So I know we have some people from all around uh, the country today. So we're excited to, um, you know, just show off Bloomerang, show off also just what you can be doing as a nonprofit. So just for a preface today, you know, while a lot of the use cases and, and samples will be showing Bloomerang, um, I do think a lot of these practices can can go to other CRMs if you are using another donor database. Um, and just maybe give you some ideas of what some of these integrations will do between CRMs and uh, their platforms. Um, so let's go ahead and just dive into today's agenda. Um, why do integrations matter? Um, what's, what's the big deal of automation and, and integrating different apps that you use? Um, and then we're going to look at some common uh, automations, integrations that you all can use um, in the nonprofit space and then how to kind of how to approach uh, setting up these integrations. What, what questions sh should you ask before just diving in? And a good chunk of our time today will be on uh, how Bloomerang integrates with others and, and showing off what integrations look like. I think it can be a scary topic for some, especially if it's a new topic for you. Um, like, oh my gosh, I have to get apps to talk to each other and I'm trying to automate systems. Um, there's a lot of plug and play out there. There's a lot of very simplified integrations um, that can make it super easy. And I just want to show off how easy it can be to set some of these things up. Um, so again, I apologize to chat for some reason, probably my error is disabled today, but uh, feel free to put any question in the Q&A and I will go through that. Um, I would just say, you know, for, for today's purpose, if you have a question, put it in there and I will go through at the end. We'll have about 15 minutes at the end to look over questions and hopefully I can get, go through every question we have today. So why do integrations matter? Uh, what's the point today? Um, there's really three big buckets of how integrations help nonprofits. Um, I think the number one is, is just reducing that manual work and, and saving time. Um, when it, it, it easily stacks up from the nonprofits I've talked to and, and that we have had uh, some interviews with, one of the biggest challenges of running a nonprofit, and I've worked at one myself, is that manual work. Um, you know, whether it's just going through checks or if it's uh, making sure that you're reaching out to people on a regular basis, um, or if it's bringing in event registrations, um, all these things, just compiling uh, these you know, I would say repetitive tasks. So how can you take something that's a, maybe a simple task that's repetitive and either automate it or uh, integrate with the app you're using that we can save, even if it's that one or two hours a week, that's one or two extra hours. And this point goes to the next point of focusing on fundraising. So when you free up your nonprofit, even with just a few hours a week, um, you can spend more time on your fundraising efforts, um, going after those major donors, um, building those relationships, taking time, um, to really, you know, make a difference in, in that, in your mission and um, try to boost those, uh, those gifts. Um, and this last point is clean and reliable data. And, and what we mean by this is when you, when you integrate apps um, that you use regularly, um, you save time in that import export, because anytime I, I, the human gets involved, there's the room for error. Um, so when you're importing or exporting or when you're manually entering data and you, you always run the risk uh, of just manual labor, human error. So uh, by integrating, having systems talk to each other, um, you can be you can rest assured that your data will be clean, reliable, um, and you can make decisions on it, knowing that, okay, this is exactly what's been coming in from uh, my other software. Um, you know, and, and as another point, especially as we are working in a more remote atmosphere today, you know, we have all we, even more technology on hand than we did even just five years ago. Um, I've noticed nonprofits have a lot more in their tech stack now, um, just in the last five or 10 years. So um, it's important that 
of all the, the apps you're using on a regular basis, how can you make sure your data is reliable and it's talking to one another? Um, I wanna give a background of different types of integrations. Um, there's a lot of words that get thrown out there. And if this is something that's new to you, I want this to be sort of like an intro um, and just to level set. So the types of integrations that I see and, and what you'll probably see in words is, is native and custom. Um, and then I also have another bucket for integration tools and I'll get to that in a second, but I want to think of integrations as a bridge. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a bridge between two apps. So let's say one is your CRM, your donor database, maybe another one um, is like event and ticketing or maybe PayPal or something else that you're using on a regular basis. When we talk about a native app, um, what that means is there's a bridge that's already been built. So there is already a bridge between your CRM and PayPal. So there's a perfect connection there. It's already ready to go. What you can tell is that it might be a little bit restrictive in some cases. Um, you, you get what you get. So when it's native, um, sometimes the customization can uh, not be fully, uh, you know, across the whole gamut, but you're getting something that has been tried and true, it's been tested, um, and it is, it's ready to go. So the, a native integration is something that's built into an app and it's ready to talk to another app. Um, when I talk about a custom integration, I like to think about this as like, you are, you're wanting to build the bridge from scratch. So perhaps that is not already in, in the works, but with a custom integration, uh, you have to contract that out. So you have to have a construction team to build that, uh, that connection. And that's what you might hear the words like open API. Um, an API is essentially that bridge between apps and how they communicate to one another, um, allow your data to run freely between the apps. So custom integrations, it may not be within the app and it, it may not be uh, a native app, but again, it's something that could be built. And this third bucket is integration tools. And for today's purposes, I'm, I'm talking about Zapier, although technically there are some others out there. Uh, Zapier is by far the most popular choice. Um, Zapier is, is, is like, think about it as like a DIY bridge building kit. Um, it makes the process of building that bridge incredibly easy. It's like, it's like an inflatable bridge is how I like to think about it. All you have to do is set it up, uh, click a few buttons, make sure a few actions are set up, and then you have that bridge built for you. Um, it's pretty cool. We're going to spend a lot of time in Zapier today. And I want to show off just how easy it is to have that DIY. Um, so that is the types of integrations. Today, we're really gonna focus on native integrations and also Zapier. But first, I wanna run a poll. Um, so let me get that launched real quick. What items are you still manually entering in a CRM or if you have a, another, you know, it's like a donor database or even if you're using Excel, um, but what items are you currently uh, entering manually that's a pain? Um, so if you look at Tom Hanks here, if I recall, this is from You've Got Mail, I think. Um, and he's, he's frustrated. He's, he's got to man manually enter all these checks. He's got to enter in all these volunteer hours. He's frustrated. Uh, but what things do fr frustrate you um, for manual entry? I'm going to let this run for about 10 or 15 more seconds. A lot say online donations. Very interesting. Event registrations, interactions. Okay, it's taking the lead. Give a few more seconds. All right, almost there. Three, two, one. All right, I'll end the poll there. I'll show those results to everyone too. There we go. Very cool. That's the numbers. Okay, so majority is between online donations and interactions. So what I expected, although I, I like seeing the numbers just for a level set. So um, it seems that a, a headache, a, a Tom Hanks moment is just getting those online donations back into your CRM. Um, and we're gonna show how some of that can be uh, a little bit easier with, with Bloomerang and some other apps here too. Very cool. All right, I'll stop sharing that poll. So I wanna talk about is here's some opportunities to automate for, I would say for most, if not all nonprofits um, and what we're gonna be showing off here today. But um, if you haven't thought about some of these areas with your nonprofit, so if, if you realize bookkeeping, um, email tracking and marketing, 
something I think a lot tend to overlook is address and deceased updates. Um, it can be a pain to manually check for address updates, to check to make sure people, um, especially if it's been a long time, um, if there's any updates on uh, you know, their status of life. So uh, there are apps out there, there are services that can do this automatically. So it can take off that uh, those hours of work. Um, well screening, again, there are systems in place where you can, you've never thought about um, screening your constituents, your donors for their philanthropic uh, giving uh, capacity. Uh, I think that's a really neat opportunity for nonprofits to take advantage of. Um, scheduled reports. Uh, this seems really boring, but I would say it can be a time saver. So uh, if you have to run a report constantly for your board or run a report constantly um, just for your boss, um, there are ways to schedule reports um, that way you don't have to go in there every day, pull up filters or, or try to, you know, pull a certain spreadsheet and send it. Um, but you can have things based on certain filters and have it automatically sent and, and honestly just check that off of your tasks. Duplicate checkers, it's important for reliable data. Make sure you don't have um, more donors than you need in your, your database. Uh, make sure your data is correct. Um, duplicates can be a, a pain. Um, so look for ways to automate those. And then some last ones, I think video thank yous is, is really popping up, I think as a, as a popular choice. Um, look into ways of how you can automate video thank yous with your fundraising strategy. Um, it seems like a huge task to you know, get a donation and then record a video, have it sent. Um, and there's some really neat apps out there that can uh, automate it and make the system the uh, process a lot easier. And, and lastly, task reminders. Um, look for ways of how can you automate um, tasks that are being assigned, um, reminders, messages, get creative. You know, you don't, it doesn't have to be 2010 anymore. We have lots of apps um, out there. Um, what I'm going to show off today is Slack and how, um, even if you have like a major gift come through, um, send a Slack DM if your nonprofit uses Slack um, to one of your major gift officers or one of your board members um, and make it easier for yourself. So you don't have to always check on major donors, but you can um, automatically have an alert for a major donor and a major gift. Okay, so here is like an approach to, so now we have some ideas for what you could automate um, with your, your, your fundraising strategy and for your nonprofit. Um, this, is, this is sort of like a sample of, of where to start. And this, this slide is, seems a little simple, but I, I wanna emphasize that many start on this fourth goal on explore apps. And I want to encourage you to first sit down and think about the use case you're, what problem you're trying to solve. Um, what are the use cases that you um, are would need and, and something to be automated. Um, it, it can be easy to just begin um, by just looking at apps and, and, and looking at different websites and seeing some of the bells and whistles and getting excited. Um, and then what I can see with nonprofits happen is that they uh, they get bloated with their their tech stack. They they purchase things that they don't necessarily need at the time, um, and then they end up having apps that either run wild and run amok. Maybe they didn't realize it would not communicate certain uh, things back to their database, um, or maybe they realize after you know they can already get that with another app they're using. So I think it's so important to identify what you're trying to accomplish first. Confirm alignment with your organizational goals. Um, and then define a desired experience. So what are you trying to accomplish with this automation, with this integration? Um, are you trying to save? So for example, if it's with online donations, are you trying to just save time in the manual entry side? Or are you also trying to do some of the communication, like send receipts um, or send you know, video thank you afterwards? Um, so look for all of what the entire experience of um, you know, what you're trying to accomplish with your fundraising goals. And then lastly, you know, prioritize integration readiness. And then once you're ready, adopt that app and implement that automation. So this is just, I want to emphasize that don't just start with the apps and what looks flashy, but really think about what works for your nonprofit. Because you might be surprised that a lot of apps, um, especially databases um, like Bloomerang, have a lot already built in. Um, and so, you know, don't rush on getting those integrations set up. Um, without first going through some of these use cases. And I want to show off um, a success story. One of our customers here at Bloomerang, 
Um, so it's called MIB Agents, um, really awesome organization. Um, and what happened with them is, is they had no donor database. Um, so prior to 2021, um, they had really a tough time using their data. 10 to 12 hours a week is what they said they were using in just administrative tasks. Um, so entering donations, thank yous, uh, bookkeeping, all that. So just 12 hours a week, just on those things. Um, and they felt like their engagement with their community was incomplete, cumbersome, um, all the above. Um, I thought it was so cool that when they started implementing not just Bloomerang, but um, they use specifically integrations with QuickBooks Online, with MailChimp, which is a, a popular email marketing tool. Uh, they use Shopify and they do sales of, of items and services um, at MIB. And then also Fundraise Up, which is another organization um, that Bloomerang partners with for online fundraising forms. Um, so they chose, those are just four of the apps that they integrated with. And since implementing those solutions in 2021, they've had a 63% increase in recurring donors, 13% increase in donor retention, 5% email open rate, 12% email click rate, and 10% increase in the number of constituents. And I want to highlight that 13% in donor retention. That might seem like a somewhat small number, but uh, if, you've, if you've watched our other webinars on donor retention, even just a 10% increase in donor retention can mean a huge, uh, huge margins for, for your revenue. So uh, really cool to see that. Just uh, check it out. Uh, we're going to send these slides after uh, this webinar day. Uh, if you click on this uh, slide here, it'll take you to, we have another class from uh, last year that was showing off this specific, uh, sorry, I can't talk, a specific success story. Um, on MIB agents, exactly what they did to implement uh, those solutions. So without further ado, I'm gonna take a pause real quick and just check through the Q&A. And then we're gonna get started uh, and show off some of these integrations. All right, let me just take a quick peek here. So far, so good. So. I see one that was about Wix um, and it looks like it just got answered. Yes, perfect. My colleague Diana is helping with chat today. So say hi, Diana, uh, if you get your uh, <laughs> question answered. All right, what I wanna show off first is some of the native integrations with Bloomerang. So what, it, again, these are things that are built in the Bloomerang. Uh, you don't need to go through Zapier. You don't need to have a, a custom integration set up by developer. These are ready to go um, as long as you have essentially enabled these um, in your database. So here I am in Bloomerang on the dashboard and I wanna show off donor search. Uh, we have a native integration with, uh, which is wealth screening. So what it does here in Bloomerang, if I click on a constituent and I search for, I'm gonna look up Jay Love here. Here is Jay's profile and his giving summary. Um, one thing that we do automate in Bloomerang uh, is this engagement level. I just wanna highlight this, I, it's such a cool thing. Um, it, it compiles all of the constituents' interactions, their giving history, um, website visits, you name it, compiles that, as the algorithm that uh, takes all of those interactions and then it gives this level of engagement, either cold, cool, warm, hot, or on fire. So essentially, how involved with, is uh, this constituent with uh, your organization? But here at the, uh, I'm gonna show up, this is the donor search integration. It's built right into the profile. Um, every standard license in Bloomerang has uh, this view right here. So uh, what this does is, is donors will scan the public facing uh, philanthropic history of a constituent. So as long as they have a valid US address, um, donor search will have information on this constituent. So this comes from public tax records um, and other you know, uh, charitable giving that in their past to other nonprofits. So you can get a good idea of how generous, uh, what is their capacity to give? So uh, with Jay, this is, a, this is a good example. If we can see, okay, he is has a very high um, propensity to give, but we notice like, okay, in the last four years, he's not had a gift. So this is a really easy way to, where an integration can show you, okay, I can find a, a hidden gem in my database and, and, and kind of go after these relationships. Um, and Bloomer makes it easy if I want to run a report for everyone who has an on-fire generosity score. I can just go to reports and go to new. I'll go start from a template and I just go to high potential donors. 
And right here has the engagement level or generosity. Maybe I just want to see the generosity. And so here I have my five households. I have a smaller demo database here, but um, here I can see Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> I can see Kurt Angle, whatnot. Um, so all of them and the generosity level is on fire. So pretty cool. Um, I can just click through on, on any of these and I can see right there the generosity score. If I wanted to view their relationship in donor search, I can click on view in donor search and this will pull up, uh, this is what the donor search integration looks like. Um, and you can really deep dive into some of their uh, charitable giving um, and, and some other details on, on their uh, capacity to give, I should say. So that is, that is donor search. Um, I'm gonna fly through some of these. I, I wanna show off six of these integrations today. So um, again, feel free to add some questions in there. And it looks like maybe Diana fixed the chat for us. We'll see. <laughs> see, she just chatted in. So we'll see what happens. Um, let's see, is the generosity level based on their donation to your organization? Yes, so Alice, it is, it's uh, fully, it's public giving. So not just your organization, that's a great question. So donor search, um, this is, so for example, for Jerry, this is not just to your organization, this is just in general, what um, there is publicly available. So um, I will say with donor search, it is not a, um, it is a very reliable number, but you're not gonna get a very hard hitting facts. It's gonna be, uh, essentially a, a, a rounded number of their propensity to give. Um, so some details may be hidden. That's just dependent upon where they're giving um, and how they give. But ultimately, this is public facing data. And since it's being given to 501c3s, um, it has to be reported. So um, generally, these numbers are trustworthy. Um, and it's just from public giving. Great question. Does it cost more to have wealth screening? And Bloomer, I see Diana's typing. So I'll let uh, her type that answer out. And yes, uh, so long, long story short with donor search is it comes standard um, with Bloomberg standard subscriptions. If you want to have a, a, a true wealth screening, um, bring in other details from donor search, we do have a separate service for that. Um, and then there's also uh, what's called the uh, full online suite of tools with donor search um, that can also be available for um, subscriptions. So, but just out of the box, you can get this uh, cool, hot, warm on fire. Uh, kind of suggested generosity score. Great questions. All right, next I want to show off uh, tree givers. So another native integration here in Bloomerang. So I want to go to, let's go to uh, Pam Beasley here. First, I want to show off uh, this address here. So bad address. So uh, it's been flagged as incorrect. So if I click on bad address, uh, notice it's been marked by uh, as bad. And then right here, we have this MCO update. So this has been a few years now, but the reason is non-mailable. So this address got returned back from the MCO stands for National Change of Address. It's run by the United States Postal Service. Um, so with true givers, this is uh, what can happen is it will scan your database on a nightly basis um, and see if your addresses are A, up to date, like if they're non-mailable for this example, um, if they're in the correct format. So making sure that it's in the best possible formats for sending mail. And they also do, they can do deceased updates. So um, if someone has passed, um, it will flag that uh, profile as deceased. So um, you don't make the mistake of sending to someone who has passed recently. Um, so to just to show how this works, if I go to settings and my and bloomering settings and then my organization. And then here I can go down to my NCAA dashboard. So if I click on this, it'll pull up this page. This is what True Givers looks like. Um, you can also assign some other uh, unique uh, integrations here. Like if you wanted to uh, assign, uh, look up, you know, birthdays just by month. Um, as well as just uh, be able to pause certain people from getting updated. Maybe there's an address you know is always a little wonky. Um, you're able to customize this integration, but uh, this is a true plug and play. Uh, it's just a matter of turning it on in Bloomerang, and then it will do a nightly scan. Uh, so again, with the NCOA, what's really cool is the USPS gets 
address updates every Sunday. So you know that if an address is updated, it's been looked at within the last week. Um, so you know you're getting, this goes back to that point of reliable, clean data. You know your addresses um, and, the, and the living status of your constituents is up to date as possible. Um, saves you a ton of time. NCOA um, and Truegiver's integration is free with all Bloomerang standard subscriptions. Um, I think it's so cool. Um, we just started offering that a few years ago. Um, we thought this is such an important thing for nonprofits to have that we want to make it available to everybody that we could. So for standard subscriptions, um, I would highly recommend turning this on if you are a Bloomerang customer, and then you can have your um, addresses synced with the USPS on a weekly basis. Very cool. Any questions on that one? Ah, it looks like the chat is also working again. Thanks, Diana. All right. Up next, we're going to talk about um, Mailchimp. So, and I I think this is an important one because I've I've done some research and our integration with Mailchimp is very similar to some other CRMs. So, even if again, if you don't use Bloomerang, this process should be fairly similar to other CRMs. So, uh, if you're in the market and if, if you're using Mailchimp, but maybe you want to use it with a CRM, um, this integration uh, should be at the same alley. So. Let's say you use MailChimp on a regular basis. You just love it. You love their email building tools. Um, you know, MailChimp is a great organization. Um, I've used it for years. Um, you can really build some cool email campaigns through there. So if I wanted to, in Bloomerang, uh, create a new MailChimp email, let's click new, MailChimp template. I'll give it a name. So I'll just do uh, July webinar. Fine. I'll say it's a newsletter. I need to give it an email address. I'll say newsletter as well. So what this does with our integration with Mailchimp is you can essentially push a constituents to a tag or in, in your audience in Mailchimp. Um, so think about you're you're building a list in your CRM, and you're going to push that list automatically to Mailchimp, and then you can apply uh, that tag in MailChimp, send your email, and then all that tracking will come right back into Bloomerang for you. So it's really cool. So let's just say I want to send to all of my, let's say re recurring donors. So maybe anyone who has a recurring donation, so specific transactions. So I'm gonna fly through this a little bit, but you can all, we'll have the video after this, so you can always pause here or rewind if you need to get these troubleshooting steps. I'm going to say type is a recurring schedule, recurring donation payment. There we go. Let's just say any money who's has it, just for the sake of example. So I have 49 uh, constituents here. Some who don't have an email address, I don't have to worry about that. It'll just automatically skip them. Um, so let's save and preview. All right. So notice here it's going to say emails to push to MailChimp. Um, so 17. So I'm going to just go ahead and push those now, or I could schedule them for later if I want to uh, have this list maybe updated after a certain point. So that is going to push to MailChimp, and I'll just show you what it looks like so I have to wait. So what you would do is in, in MailChimp, this, hopefully this looks familiar, um, if I was building an email campaign, I could click on here's the like webinar example. Once I pull up this uh, list here, I'll replicate this so I can create a new one. And I can find my uh, recipient. So I go to edit recipients and right here, so this, this new segment or tag. And notice right here, I have this July webinar test too. And it has today's date, 07, 26, 22, and it's at 1.30. And there we go, save, and it should be all right, so nine recipients, there we go. So some of them might have been already in my MailChimp uh, audience. That's why it's a different number there. But essentially I pushed that list to MailChimp and now I can send uh, directly to those emails that were in my uh, Bloomerang database. Um, so I could hit send. I could either schedule or just send that now. And as an example, if I go back to, just so you can see what the tracking looks like, I know this, Constituent was on the list. All 
if I go to the timeline, notice I've, I've sent one uh, this morning and then one just now. So I can see the tracking's working. It's in, so this is the perfect example of an integration where uh, I didn't have to import or export necessarily. It was just a matter of in Bloomerang, I, I pushed the list then automatically brought tracking back in. And I click on the most recent one. Um, he hasn't opened it yet. So um, right now it's still grabbing that info at the moment. But if I go to like the one from this morning, we'll see a little bit more. So here we go. Uh, so I can see it's sent, has not been opened yet, has not been clicked on yet. So still waiting. Um, but if if Henry here was to click on the email, I would see all this right in here. I could report on it. Um, this would affect his engagement and his tracking. Um, so that's what's really cool about these integrations is also uh, the engagement piece, where um, if you keep everything in a single source of truth, um, you're getting probably the most up-to-date and the most accurate picture of what your donors um, are, are, you know, what they're doing with your organization. Okay, yeah, and what about setting up integration to begin with? What are those steps? So uh, right now we're talking about native integration. So in this case, this is already set up. So the work's been done by Bloomerang. So um, that is the simplicity of a native integration. Um, I'm gonna show off Zapier and that's a little bit more hands-on like that DIY and here in just a second. But um, these are just some opportunities I think that are common. Um, again, these are in Bloomerang native, but I have seen these in other uh, you know, competitor CRMs. I've seen them in other um, you know, even just other databases. So um, common integrations that I've seen um, in, in the nonprofit space. Great question though. All right, uh, I wanna just really quickly show off uh, QuickBooks. So if I go to my settings and go to QuickBooks Online. So the Bloomerang QuickBooks uh, integration um, and this may be similar to some other databases, but uh, what you can set up is mapping, custom mapping. So if you have, uh, you can build rules that will determine, okay, if this is, goes to a certain fund, then it should be assigned a certain service class, uh, service item, um, and be deposited to a certain uh, account. So I can build multiple rules. I can have a default mapping. So if I wanted to, uh, maybe if it doesn't match any of these rules, where should it go? It will deposit his uncategorized asset. And I can also adjust things like when do I want this thing to start? Do I just want to start with uh, donations that uh, from this year? Um, or do I want to go from all historical uh, transactions? And you can also uh, update which types of transactions should get mapped to QuickBooks. So these are just set up um, steps for this particular native integration. Um, but what's really neat with QuickBooks is that if I was to enter a, um, here, I'll just do a quick unsync report. Let's see what this pulls up. So this is everything that has not yet synced to my uh, QuickBooks. So I have an idea of, okay, here's some transactions um, and there's some here from just the last month that have not uh, been entered into QuickBooks online. So I can go back to QuickBooks and I can sync these to my QuickBooks account. And I'll pull up QuickBooks online here. Uh, okay, whoops. I have to sign back in here. Ah, looks like someone logged me out there for a second. So, but here you can see the Bloomerang support uh, is my test account. And in the background, you can see that here's my uh, sales and my transactions. They get pulled in from Bloomerang uh, directly into my QuickBooks account. So this is a huge time saver, QuickBooks Online integration. I would highly recommend if you use QuickBooks, um, if you're using Bloomerang, if you're using a CRM, um, to get this set up and configured. Um, it can take just a few minutes and a few, uh, a little bit of focus to make sure that you're setting up correctly. Um, I, I really would emphasize getting rules set up in place, work with your accountant, work with your bookkeeper to make sure things are routing correctly. But then it will save you so many time, so much uh, of your time. Uh, so you don't have to worry about exporting donations on like a weekly or, you know, uh, even daily basis, sending them to your bookkeeper. You know that anything that gets entered into your CRM will go right to QuickBooks correctly. So again, uh, this is a way just to save time, um, save yourself headaches, so you know that things are automatically routing uh, to your QuickBooks online account. All right, those are the native integrations I want to show up. So now let's let's get to some of the some of the fun. So is Zapier. Uh, so Zapier is uh, essentially this DIY bridge builder. Um, so I'm going to pull up Zapier here. 
So if you log in, if you have a Zapier account, it, it can actually be free to sign up. Um, and with Zapier, you get out of the box uh, what are called two-step zaps. So um, you can have something. When I say steps, I mean something can happen, then something else can happen. So for example, someone registers for an event, uh, gets entered into Bloomerang, or someone uh, makes a certain transaction and you send a Slack message. That would be two steps in a sense. Uh, if you want more steps than that, Zapier does have different levels um, that you can sign up for um, besides the free plan. So if you really want to get into, okay, I want to send, maybe I want, after a transaction, I want to send an email, but I also want to send a Slack message, and then I want to send an additional email. So multi-step Zaps, um, they're just as easy to set up. It's just a matter of uh, your level in Zapier. So I want to show up two examples of a Zap between Bloomerang and some common uh, apps that nonprofits use. So uh, one is Eventbrite. So if I, uh, let me just start this, I'll, I'll click on this and we'll kind of walk through the steps of setting this up. So let's just start this from scratch actually. I think that will be a little bit clearer. So if I create a Zap, I can search for any apps that are available through Zapier. So not necessarily every single online service will be in here, um, but I would say a majority of the most popular apps are gonna be out there. So here's an example is Eventbrite. Maybe I want to have every person that registers for my event um, get entered into Bloomerang. So I don't have to worry about exporting from Eventbrite and having it pushed um, into Bloomerang. So I can click uh, Eventbrite, Let's just say it's a new attendee check-in. Let's say registered, actually. Let's do that. It's going to ask me to sign into my event right account. I've already signed in in the past, so there it is. And I'm going to click uh, event status. Yeah, that's fine. We'll say live ones. And then let's see if I can find. Having some difficulty here. All right. Essentially, if I go back, let me just go back to my uh, example one here. This one's already turned on, so I know it's working. There we go. So what I would do here then is uh, I selected my event was the webinar test. So here in, in uh, Eventbrite, here's my webinar test event here. Um, so here. So right now I have one step where the new attendee checks in. That's fine. So once a new attendee checks in, then it will find a constituent Bloomerang and match it to their account. So here I have um, notice the app is Bloomerang. It's going to find a constituent. I'm logged into my Bloomerang account. And then what you have to do with Zapier is you set up um, what you want to map to which fields in Bloomerang. So uh, for the Bloomerang field first name, I want the first name from Eventbrite, the last name in Bloomerang. I also want the last name of Eventbrite. Uh, and then these two down here are, okay, what if the new constituent? How should we make a new constituent? Well, I want to make them with first name, first name, last name, last name. And if there's no one getting matched, I'm creating a new constituent. Um, and then it's just a matter of testing that Zap, turning it on. And when I have someone check in to my Eventbrite, uh, then this gets pushed automatically to my Bloomerang database. Um, super simple setup. Um, I think Zapier is really cutting edge and you can do a lot of automation um, th through this application. So really cool stuff. Um, next one I'm gonna show off is the Slack major journal. Let's see if I can do this from, from scratch. I've, I've been striking out a little bit with some technology today, but here we go. All right, so let's say I want uh, in Bloomerang, how about every time there's a major donor, so I'm going to say new transaction, and I'm going to pick my Bloomerang account there. There's multiples because I've been doing other demos, but this is just, if you just have one Bloomerang account, it would pull in this one. All right, set up the trigger. So what what is going to trigger Zap from performing an action? So here I want to say uh, any donation. And minimum amount. So let's say only donations of $500 or more. I don't want to just spam Slack with every transaction coming through. But for me and my organization, I think uh, a significant gift would be $500. I want to alert one of my major gift officers. So 500 
And do I want to include their uh, cumulative giving history in the message? Sure, so true. Uh, and include any household information? Yes. So I continue. So Zapier always wants to test the trigger, make sure it's actually set up and working before you just you know, set and forget. So I'm going to test the trigger. It's going to look for any recent transactions, making sure it's connecting. Perfect. There, it found a transaction. It's giving me just what it's going to be pulling from the data. So I know this is a little scary, but here it's just pulling what it's finding in Bloomerang. So here it found uh, a transaction from Henry Bombay. So that looks good. So I'm going to hit continue. All right, so now it found the trigger. Now, what are we going to do? Well, I want, once there's that $500 gift, I want to have it send to Slack. So I'm gonna look up Slack in my app events. And I'm gonna say, I want to send a direct message to someone. So maybe I have someone in mind, like a major gift officer, a board member to send a direct message. I choose my Slack account. Perfect. So I can add some other options here. Um, here to two usernames. Let's say I'm going to just do myself. There we go. I'm going to say major donor alert will be the message text. And then I can assign the bot name. I can, if it wants to, or come from another person's name, um, that's all fine. I can even customize like the icon the bot has. So this all looks good. I'm going to hit continue and test and continue. And this should pull up in my Slack. And I can see, I won't pull up my Slack, but it looks like it came through. And it's just a matter of hitting publish and turn on. And boom, I automated my major donors in my database to go right to Slack. So if I want to make sure people are alerted right away, then they can jump right on uh, building that relationship with that donor. Pretty cool stuff. Um, so that is two examples of just how Zapier um, can really make automation super simple. Again, it's a DIY bridge builder is the way I think about it. Um, all right, so we're just about 50 minutes. That's right where I want to be. I want to have lots of time for questions. I'm going to look through the Q&A and feel free to add some more to the chat. Um, hopefully I answer a lot of questions about how just to set up an integration with Zapier in general. And all right, so yes, this will be recorded. So we'll send this recording and slides out afterwards. Um, but feel free to put any questions out into the Q&A or the chat section. Happy to go over anything, answer any questions. I know I kind of zoomed through six integrations there, so uh, I wouldn't be shocked if there's more questions. <laughs> OK, let's see. Slack app. So that is for communication uh, team messaging. That is what we use here at Bloomerang. I use it at my um, a nonprofit I used in the past. Um, it is free for certain levels to use, I believe. Um, once you get in a certain number of users and channels, I think you'd have to check Slack's website for the pricing. Um, but Slack, it tends to be a more popular choice for like team messaging. Um, and honestly, if your nonprofit's not using it, if you have a even, I would say a, a smaller team. Um, I had a team that was probably about 10 or 15 people that I worked on um, in, in years past and we used Slack um, and it was super helpful. It, it beat having to send emails all the time um, and you know going back and forth in, in text messages. So um, if, you, if you haven't, I would look into it, but I would say uh, it, it's a, there's some opportunities there between your donor database and Slack to be able to really jump on uh, communications. Slack and used to love it. <laughs> uh, with your dashboard there, you integrate how many apps? So uh, we have on our, if you check our, our integrations page on our website, we have a list of some of our native integrations. We go to integrations and data management here. And here, if you, if you go to our uh, software integrations, so if I scroll down, these are the native ones that are come included. So. Uh, QuickBooks, uh, Applos, Fundraise, App, MailChimp, TrueGivers, QGive, all these are uh, already connected with Bloomerang. Um, so there's something already built there. Um, how much it costs to get all the apps to subscribe and make that? Yeah, so uh, Zapier is free to start with. So um, 
as far as getting Zapier hooked up and ready, you can you can technically get started right away with Zapier. Um, again, if you want to have multi-level steps in your Zap, that's where it will come at, at a, a different subscription level. Um, that's up to Zapier, um, not Bloomerang. So I'm not sure in those prices. Um, that should be on Zapier's website though. Um, but everything else that we showed up today uh, either came standard with Bloomerang. Um, there are some different levels with like donor search, as I mentioned, um, but out of the box, you can get a uh, national change of address. You can get wealth screening, uh, QuickBooks integration, all that uh, ready to go. Yeah. Let's see. So yes, pay for Zap. So you can pay for Zap here. Um, again, out of the box, it is, it is free to use, but um, just depending on the level of automation you want to set up, then there, there will be a, a, a service. We want all income to go to QuickBooks. When, uh, as Bloomer, I'm going to call everything donations. Great question. So when you are entering into Bloomerang, uh, Bloomerang is the source truth for donors and donations. So everything that does come into Bloomerang will be either a donation, like a recurring payment or a pledge. Um, so if it is another source of income, um, then we do recommend either putting that directly into QuickBooks um, so just do a manual entry, or if you have another service you use to track other uh, sources of income, see if that integrates with your QuickBooks Online account. But as far as a QuickBooks integration with Bloomerang, um, uh, the answer is yes, everything will be uh, assigned as a donation. Um, since everything that lives in Bloomerang, if you think about it, uh, everything in Bloomerang should be either a donation or coming from a donor um, in that relationship. Recurring donations only pledges, um, or is there a way to tag gifts such as checks that are giving in a recurring donation? Uh, so, so Irene, I, for that question, my understanding, uh, yes, with Bloomerang, there are ways to uh, tag things as checks. So if I wanted to, for example, uh, pull up here, let's pull up Jay's account again. So I can either do a new donation, I can do a new pledge or a recurring donation um, as far as like a, as a new transaction. And I can either tag the method as check um, if I'm entering. So if I wanted to enter a new transaction here, I could set check, I could have a check number and check date, or I could have another method assigned. Um, same with recurring donations and whatnot. If I want to do a new recurring donation, I can select the method Maybe it's an EFT or it's a credit card. Um, yeah, there is some customization how you want to tag transactions in Bloomerang specifically. Ooh, is Zapier HIPAA compliant? I would say that that is a question above me. I can't give a 100% answer and that would have to be a question before Zapier. Um, I would say... I would say yes, but it would, I, I want to put a big asterisk on that because it depends on the apps that you're using. Um, so, for example, Bloomerang, I would not recommend um, putting sensitive uh, medical information um, necessarily into um, and where you could have other users. It's not so much that it, it is uh, really for any app that is not specifically for uh, medical purposes. Um, Usually those are designed with the intent of being HIPAA compliant. So um, if there are apps on the Zapier space that are um, you use in a, in a medical capacity, uh, I would say they would probably be HIPAA compliant, but that, that would depend on the apps you, that you're assigning. So I, I would be careful. I would, be, uh, I would make sure you ask questions um, with the apps you're using. Um, but overall, I would say most apps, if there, as long as there's medical intent behind them, I would assume, uh, I would assume yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, Done for a serial gifts at a, a past donation to be recurring. Um, the short answer with Bloomerang is you can update transactions, um, but to certain appeals and funds. But if you want to update the type, um, you would just need to remove that donation, then add the correct type of donation. So if you needed to. Um, change a bunch of historical gifts to a recurring payment, you'd need to set up a schedule, a recurring schedule first and then have the subsequent payments. Um, 
But yes, you can technically edit the timeline of constituents in Bloomerang. Um, yes. Uh, Bloomerang has its own dashboard um, and these subscriptions. Um, the dashboard comes right out of the box with Bloomerang. Um, so here I have dashboard with my first time donor calls, um, recent constituents, amount raised dashboard here. Um, and then some of these are just like kind of just get back into work quickly, like recent constituents, recent reports. We have uh, my task section here that is um, pulls them automatically from tasks I've been assigned to myself or to my team, as well as the campaign uh, progress bars down here that are clickable, um, as well as the donor retention wheel. Uh, but all this comes standard um, in Bloomerang on any account. No, no extra subscription needed. Great questions. Lots of good ones. Any others? We've got about eight minutes. I know we have lots of time left. Um, I appreciate everyone sticking around. Uh, happy to show anything else off or answer any other further questions on integrations. Um, I'm going to check back on the chat real fast. Okay. Oh, great question on, sorry, I missed Lisa's from a few minutes ago. If something goes wrong with the QuickBooks integration, does Bloomerang help with that? I would, yes, I would just reach out to Bloomerang support. If you are using Bloomerang and you are having issues with your QuickBooks account, um, chat Bloomerang support, they'd be happy to help. Um, there are certain things, I will make a caveat that, uh, you know, the, the Bloomerang support team, is, we're not accountants, so, uh, if you have a, a specific like, accounting question, like where or why something should go somewhere, um, you know, I wouldn't say that's something we can really advise, but if there's a connection that's not happening, if something is just not stinking, um, by all means, reach out to uh, Bloomerang support. You can just click on the question mark icon and, and live chat um, and they'd be happy to help you. All right, let's see. With donor search, it looks like it's free to view the generosity and constituent, but the actual wealth screen donor search requires. Okay, yes, Heather. So to go back to this, the generosity score is is free. It comes right with Bloomerang. Um, um, so no additional subscription. The other two options we have with donor search is the wealth screening, um, which will bring in that extra data. So if I want to run, let's say like a report on uh, capacity to give, like the actual dollar amount of capacity, or if I wanted to know their most recent philanthropic gift outside of Bloomerang, uh, those like specific details, that would, would require a wealth screening or a batch screening uh, to bring into your database. And then there is also another level of donor search if you want to go even further, um, where you can click through and view even more data uh, in donor search. But as far as what comes out of the box and is already integrated with Bloomerang, um, this generosity score, which is based on the donor search, um, what they call the DS scores, like their DS one, two, three, four, and five, uh, which is essentially what each of these are. So cold is DS one, on fire is DS five. So that's donor searches uh, algorithm for, is someone a generous person uh, is the way I think about it. And that comes all out of the box. Yes, QGIF. So uh, if you are wanting to use QGIF as an option for events or for auctions, um, we also have, and I would say it's a, a custom integration that we've, we've built. So it, it does not come necessarily out of the box where uh, there's like an icon for it in Bloomerang, but if you sign up for QGIF, um, you can have that data automatically sync back to your Bloomerang account. Um, you don't have to have Zapier or, or anything like that. Um, so I, I don't have my QGIF logged in right now. I want to uh, show you guys, you know, me floundering around and logging in. But uh, if you have QGIF, essentially you can log into QGIF um, and you can set up that integration on, on that side to talk to your Bloomerang account. Um, so things like uh, event registrations and, um, yeah, I think text to give and, and, and communications can all sync back to Bloomerang through QGIF. Um, I would check out, Jeff, there are some videos we have on QGIF, I believe, on our YouTube channel. Um, I'm, I'm a big YouTube guy, so I like watching videos on stuff. So uh, feel free to check those out um, for some more information on QGIF.
Okay, let's see. I think we got through most of them. We got about a few more minutes. Okay, yeah, what is Kindful and Connected Bloomerang? So yeah, uh, I probably should touch on this more, but I wanted to show off some of the other integrations. So Kindful is, we uh, acquired Kindful uh, a few years ago. So we, uh, it, they are part of the Bloomerang family. Um, and Kindful fundraising tools, um, which includes their peer-to-peer -peer fundraising and uh, crowdfunding pages um, are available in Bloomerang. So you can, you can add to your subscription. So it does not come necessarily straight out of the box for all levels. Um, but if you are interested in even more powerful online giving tools, um, you can sign up for Kindful and, uh, and get those tools um, add to your Bloomerang account. I'm gonna send a quick poll um, since I've seen some hand raisers. So uh, if you are interested in follow-up, um, go ahead and hit you know, yes, please. Um, this is a no pressure survey. It's just more or less if you wanna get a follow-up on how to get started. I saw a few questions on, hey, I, I wanna get more info on Bloomerang, I wanna get started, or even just more info on QGive, donor search, any of these uh, integrations we talked about today. Um, if you are interested in that, we'll have, um, our success team and um, reach out and they will make sure that you get uh, the information you need to make it the right decision. So, um, so yeah, feel free to just hit yes, please. And we will get in contact with you. Um, no problem. I'll leave that up until we're, we're closed out for today. But yes, back to uh, Kindful Fundraising. Um, well, that's still going is um, really awesome tools. So Kindful was um, at, at a time they were a competitor in our space, but we saw that we had we have very close visions and and uh, honestly, I love working with the team now. And so now we're under one roof of Bloomerang, um, and we have similar visions and, and similar ways of wanting to help nonprofits. So we're combining the best of both. So Kindful's uh, amazing fundraising tools and Bloomerang's uh, CRM and 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 reporting and and uh, constituent management tools are combined in, into one. So you can have Kindful added to uh, Bloomerang. Um, so if you're interested, if you're already a Bloomerang customer, um, it's as simple as um, you can click on Kindful here and get started. You have to connect to your processor in my database here, but um, you can also just chat online um, or email support if you, if you want to get started and we'll route you in the right, right place. Okay. Well, like I said, we're coming out at the last minute. Um, we will send the recording and slides um, after to everyone that attended. Um, but I really thank everyone for uh, being interactive, uh, asking lots of questions, watching me flounder around a bit with logins and whatnot. Um, big thanks to Diana for helping me get chat enabled and, and answering questions as well. So um, until the next Nonprofit Success webinar, I will uh, I hopefully see you all at the next one. Um, otherwise, have a great Tuesday. Um, and I will see you later.